Hello everybody and welcome back to the ACC YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you another uh, overview on one of our newest series products. So today we're going to be talking about the brand new uh, GTX 670 graphics card. So this is essentially the launch of uh, the brand new high performance uh, graphics card from NVIDIA. It's positioned directly underneath the previous released flagship GTX 680 and the uber flagship uh, dual GPU part, the GTX 690. Um, so one of the unique characteristics of what we're going to be talking about is a lot of non-reference parts. Uh, sometimes we bring you videos that kind of detail and focus on uh, the initial, let's say, reference part design, and then later on, at a later date, we'll talk about our non-reference. This happened with the, let's say, the GTX 680 part, where we did an unboxing overview on the original 680, and then we followed up with our direct CE2 design when it came to market at a later date. Um, for this launch, it's going to be a little bit different. There will be partners uh, such as ASUS that will bring a full non-reference design, and that's what this video is going to be centering around and helping you guys understand some of the unique features and the performance benefits that our direct CU2 as well as our non-reference design elements bring to the table. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the first portion that we normally talk about, which is going to be the accessories. So you can see right here, we've got the accessories that come included with the unit. Pretty straightforward, uh, just a couple of light items. We've got the speed setup guide. So this is a quick setup uh, detailing in terms of how to install the card onto the motherboard, as well as the quick connection options that are available in terms of the display uh, outputs. And then of course we've got our uh, GPU tweak setup and utility software. This is great because this is the software that's going to allow you to enable to overclock the card, overvolt it, modify the fan curve, um, do essentially a lot of monitoring and adjustment or tweaking uh, to the graphics card. As always though, for the latest drivers, head over to nvidia.com and for the latest version of GPU Tweak, head over to support.asus.com and type in GPU Tweak into the search box. Next up from here, we've got a power adapter. In most situations, generally for an enthusiast card like this, I, I recommend having native connections that are coming from your power supply. Uh, but for you guys that might be maybe having a legacy uh, type power supply, uh, you know, one of the great things about this, tar this card and specifically the Kepler architecture it's extremely power efficient, so even if you have an older power supply, you can actually uh, probably get away with uh, utilizing this adapter without an issue. So right here, of course, we've got PCI Express uh, to two standard uh, Molex power uh, connections, and that would allow you to go ahead and make a connection to a PCI Express port. Okay, guys, now that we've done a quick uh, overview there on the accessories that come included, let's take a look at the box and some of the key technologies that we have listed here. So first and foremost, you can see that it is, of course, our direct CU2, which means it's a non-reference card in terms of the heat sink and the fan assembly, and it is utilizing our direct contact copper technology, which allows us to have really effective heat dissipation, and we'll go more into that when we actually physically get to the card. One of the unique characteristics right here, though, it is a, a top series card, and that does mean that it is part of our overclock series, uh, where we specifically specifically screen and then select the GPUs that we're utilizing there because we're shipping them at higher than uh, reference clock speeds. So that is an important note there. And you can see that that's backed up down here by the actual frequency that's noted. We have an, a frequency of uh, 1137 as compared to what the normal GPU boost frequency would be on a, a GTX 670, which is approximately about 980 megahertz. So quite a bit bump up in terms of the baseline performance. And keep in mind that uh, with our digital power design as well as with our uh, quality heat sink and fan assembly, it's very easy to exceed this uh, in our test we've gone actually over 1300 megahertz easily. So uh, moving over to there, of course, uh, this is brand new in terms of our uh, NVIDIA graphics cards and overall to our non-reference series of cards that we first launched on the 680 part, uh, DC2. We're now incorporating a digital power design which has some really cool benefits that we'll talk about when we get actually to the card itself. Uh, GPU Tweak, as we outlined, is our software utility to allow you to do all the tweaking, tuning, and monitoring for your graphics card. And of course, it's got two gigabytes of GDDR5, which is awesome. Gives us a high amount of memory, which is really key for high anti-aliasing and high resolution gaming, especially for you guys that are interested in keeping a lot of the image quality effects enabled and uh, pumping it up in terms of 3D vision and things like that. So from there, let's take a look at the back of the box. All right, guys. So you can see here we've got a couple of other items noted, such as the display output connectivity. We have four display outputs that we'll note when we get to the card. Uh, one of the cool points is definitely going to be right here where you see that not only do we have our Digi Plus uh, VRM design, which we've brought over, to this series of cards, but we continue to have our super alloy power, power delivery components. So these are our much higher quality chokes, drivers, and MOSFETs, which not only give us uh, better durability, overall better lifespan, lower operating temperatures, but overall superior power delivery and better efficiency. So uh, pluses all around in terms of the non-reference design aspect of the card. Um, but all that noted, let's actually get to what you guys are really interested, which is the card itself. So we've got our actual star of the show here, the GTX 670 DirectCU2 Top Graphics Card. Um, um, so this is an outstanding, awesome card. I mean, uh, NVIDIA has done a really exemplary job in stepping it up in terms of really providing a card that meets a high performance marker. 
um, while still being extremely power efficient and uh, giving you a lot of improvements, not only in terms of the performance and the image quality, uh, but also in the display connectivity. It really meets their kind of uh, motto in terms of faster, smoother, richer in terms of the overall gameplay experience that you're having. Now, we've gone ahead and definitely pushed past the reference design in a lot of ways. And one of the first and most telling uh, ways is going to be in the thermal assembly or what's called our, our uh, heat sink and fan assembly design. So you can see right here, we have of course uh, two fans and uh, these directly go over our full actual uh, heat pipe assembly, which is finned. And then we're using a direct contact uh, copper method to go ahead and effectively dissipate the heat coming from the GPU through this uh, heat sink assembly. And then of course the air dissipation being provided by the, the fans. Now we're gonna touch a little bit more on the actual design itself when we take apart the card. So the next part is let's take a look at actually the display output connectivity. Okay guys, so here we've got the display output. You can see it's pretty robust. Um, since this is based off the new Kepler architecture, it mirrors actually a lot of the display output connectivity that we had on the GTX 680. So great right off the bat in terms of that means is you have full multi-display support. So that's actually up to three panels with a fourth accessory panel uh, supported. You've got a lot of flexibility here in terms of the display outputs with a DVI-I and a DVI-D connection and a full size DP and a full size HDMI. Now outside of course being able to support, let's say 3D vision, you also have 3D vision surround support as well as just general 3D playback. So a lot of overall functionality in terms of the display output connectivity that you have on the card and really nice that uh, not only that the GPU performance um, is there but of course it's there to even meet that higher level of functionality such as multi-panel gaming or even 3D vision surround. So with that let's uh, go ahead and move over to the back side of the card and take a look at some of the unique aspects that we have there. Okay guys, here we are at the back of the card and we've got a couple of different uh, things to cover. So first and foremost right here at the top, of course we have our SLI uh, connection headers, so that allows you to go ahead and enable a uh, single card, uh, which of course you don't need any type of connections, just straight plugs into your by 16 PCI Gen 2 or PCI Gen 3 slot, a uh, physical by 16 um, But of course, if you're going to be running two-way or up to the maximum that is supported on the GTX 670 three-way SLI, then of course you're going to be utilizing those connectors. Now you can see, of course, one of the classic signs of really it being an ASUS non-reference design in a high-performance card is that we have a full actual brace mechanism. This is to go ahead and help to provide better rigidity as well as also go ahead and add a nice aesthetic touch to it and provide some additional actually heat dissipation properties uh, for the card, hence the actual venting that we have there. So overall a very nice touch and is also critical in terms of an attention to detail when a, uh, you have a, a larger than non-reference heat sink and fan assembly. Now, if we move over to the PCIe power connections, um, this still maintains a high degree of the power efficiency that this type of uh, card offers due to it being based on the Kepler architecture. So we've got two six pin PCI Express power connections uh, with the overall actual power consumption being really, really great. Uh, in most situations, you're gonna be averaging in normal non-extreme TDP loads, about 140 watts, possibly a little bit more, of course, if you're overclocking the card. But overall, that's very impressive that you could keep in mind that even with an SLI configuration, you're in a very nice envelope. Um, take, for instance, here in the test system that we have, we have a uh, Corsair AX uh, 750 watt power supply, which would comfortably be able to drive our X79 system even in an SLI configuration. So uh, it's very nice to be able to have that power efficiency, but still have a high performance GPU part. Now, one word to note is that we do have a little bit of a diagnostic implementation here at play. That you can see that there's two little LEDs that are directly underneath the actual connection points. These will actually illuminate when you have the card connected to let you know whether or not uh, the card is successfully fitted with the PCIe Express uh, power connection. So if they are connected correctly, you'll see two green LEDs, and if they're not connected correctly, you will see two red LEDs, or one if maybe one's inserted correctly with green, and then the other maybe is not fully seated, and therefore it would be red. So a nice little touch in terms of just giving you a little bit of visual indicator when you're installing the card. Now, one of the really cool uh, parts is going to touch on our non-reference VRM. And the VRM are the voltage regulation components. Uh, these are the critical items that help to provide power to the overall card itself. And uh, the better componentry that we're putting on under our super alloy power initiative really helps to drive a higher level of performance uh, improve the long-term reliability and the overall efficiency of the card. And you can see right here we have some very high performance pause caps directly in a back-to-back -back configuration. So what that means is that these actual pause caps are positioned directly behind the GPU and that improves their ability to have a high level of capacitance uh, that can be immediately driven to the CPU, especially as we start to overclock it, which is uh, very critical, especially under this type of architecture where you're gonna have a lot of transient response occurring uh, and a lot of frequency changing because of the GPU boost technology that we have in there. So keep in mind that sometimes the frequency is going from a baseline, 
of maybe let's say a little bit over a thousand megahertz and it's going to be ramping all the way up to maybe like 13 megahertz megahertz so uh, enabling that overclocking with higher voltages and things along those lines uh, this is one of those additional steps that helps to separate asus uh, from reference card designs so that gives you a little bit of perspective in terms of uh, what we're dealing with here on the back of the card of course notwithstanding the standard physical by 16 slot that you see at the very bottom so with that let's go ahead and uh, disassemble this card and take a little bit uh, more detail in terms of the heatsink and the fan assembly and the PCB and the VRM. We've gone ahead and removed the four screws that we had there affixing uh, the PCB board to the actual heatsink assembly. So from there, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a twist and then from there, go ahead and open her up for you. And you can see right here, we've got the, the full uh, visible uh, base of the actual heatsink assembly. So we can see the actual three direct uh, copper heat pipes that are nickel plated, as well as we're seeing here the base of the actual GPU die and the PCB and all the VRM components that we have. And so we're gonna go a little bit in detail on these guys uh, once we go ahead and actually disconnect the heatsink uh, from the actual PCB board. You can see here that we've actually got the direct CU2 uh, heatsink and uh, fan assembly here to present to you guys. And you can see right off the bat, it's a whole lot of surface area in terms of the heat dissipation abilities of the card. You know, one of the key focus areas with the DC2 is to really provide a high performance, high efficiency uh, thermal solution that is not only very good at effectively cooling uh, the card in both uh, idle and stock load configurations, but as well as even in overclock situations. Um, you know, in our tests, we've actually seen some really impressive numbers in terms of real world gaming metrics, even at high resolutions like 2560 by like 1440, uh, we've been seeing temperatures uh, that generally are somewhere between about 70 to about 72 C. Uh, and in many cases, in terms of our test comparisons, uh, we were between you know, 9 to 12 C cooler than the actual reference solution. In terms of not only the, uh, the, the cooling potential of the card, another point is going to be that you know, with this high efficiency in terms of the three copper heat pipes and this large mass in terms of the finned uh, aluminum assembly, this really gets a, a big benefit in terms of when we take a look at the card here and we talk about the, uh, co the dual uh, fan design, it really helps to go ahead and cool effectively this larger surface area but at a much lower RPM level and this helps to give us a really low operating uh, noise footprint. In our testing we were generally seeing under gaming load about 25 dB which is very quiet and if I go ahead and stop here if you guys have noticed uh, this system we've had actively running and looping Unigen at a very high set of uh, settings in terms of the image quality. So let's go ahead and just stop uh, for a moment here and let you guys hear uh, what the card sounds like under gaming load. Okay guys, so you can see overall we've got a really quiet card in terms of the overall noise footprint. Um, you know, once again, we've been running this card essentially through the entire time and you know, a as you can notice, it's a very quiet card. I'm not struggling in terms of uh, trying to uh, you know, talk over the card because it's a very low operating footprint. And keep in mind that the thermal performance is still outstanding even though we have this card in the top series already overclocked. And uh, even when I've gone ahead and overclocked the card, I've got additional headroom because of this high quality heatsink assembly. And I've been able to achieve over 1300 megahertz on this card, but still be in about a 75 to 76 C range. And the other key benefit of this thermal design is that compared to the reference, we're able to maintain the GPU boost frequency even higher than what we're necessarily rating it for. So where we talked about that, uh, you know, the base clock on the graphics card uh, is set to a GPU boost frequency of 1137, we're generally seeing under gaming load with our high performance heatsink assembly that we're getting a little bit over about 1200 megahertz. Uh, so 1.2 gigahertz in terms of the actual operating frequency. So from here, let's actually go ahead and take a look at some of the really cool aspects behind Digi Plus VRM and the SAP power components on the PCB board. Okay guys, here you can see that we've got the bare PCB board itself. So right off the bat, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful looking PCB, really clean, um, really well designed, and we've got this really nice uh, matte PCB, which just gives a really nice aesthetic. But you know, while aesthetics are awesome, uh, what really counts is quality engineering and high quality componentry and that attention to detail. So um, some of the things that we want to talk to you guys about are going to be the Digi Plus VRM design implementation, as well as uh, the SAP power componentry. So right off the bat, you can see right here, we've got this Digi Plus controller, and this is one of the unique characteristics uh, on our card as opposed to the reference design. With the reference design, it's an analog IC as opposed to a digital IC. With a digital, um, we actually have a lot of key benefits where overall we can help to extend the overclocking margin because we're helping to reduce uh, EMI 
we're having an, an overall uh, a little bit better efficiency. We have more accuracy in terms of the control parameters and, and the adjustments that we're making on the fly. So very similar to a lot of the digital uh, benefits that we have on the motherboard side, we're also getting that benefit uh, on, on this uh, card here by incorporating that. So that's a nice plus point for us. Now in terms of the power componentry, there's also a, quite a number of upgrades in comparison to what we have on the reference part. On the reference card, we have a four-phase uh, solution, while on our card, we're, uh, we're not only utilizing six phases, but there are SAP power phases. So you can see right here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six phases versus the four that are there. And these are also our high performance, uh, fully sealed uh, chokes, which are made under very high uh, temperatures, as well as under extreme pressure. And they allow them to have higher performance metrics, as well as longer durability, more resistance to different types of ambient temperature, whether they're hot and cold. Overall, just a higher performing part, uh, with performance really being metrics in multiple areas, whether it's lifespan, uh, whether it's an overall operating functionality, and things along those lines. You can see we have a nice attention to detail right next to that in terms of that we have a VRM heatsink here covering some of the critical components like some of the MOSFETs which can get quite hot. Uh, another one of the key components that we have is going to be the SAP caps, which you see all throughout here. These are very high performance capacitors, which have very impressive ESR levels. And uh, in terms of the overall lifespans of these parts, they, ex uh, they perform very well even at much hotter temperatures, which as you guys know with a graphics card and especially in a high performance chassis, if you've got multiple GPUs, a lot going on in there, the internal ambient temperature can be uh, sometimes easily over 75, 80 C. So it's important to have higher quality components that you're ensure that you're getting longer lifespan. Compared to a normal base, uh, let's say polymer-based capacitor, these have about two, uh, <coughs> excuse me, about a two to 2.5x uh, performance lifespan. Uh, one of the other uh, nice touches here in terms of just uh, the super alloyed uh, chokes, the super alloyed caps, is we also have pause caps, which are high performance, even more specialized versions of capacitors, where we have nine of them uh, on this solution, whereas on the reference card, they only have two pause caps. So you can see that those guys are essentially right here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And then if you remembered when we showed you the back of the card, the back actually has four POS caps in that direct back-to-back -back configuration where here we have that GPU die right on the back side. We have those four POS caps giving us that high level of capacitance directly there on the back of the card. So overall, that gives you a little bit of perspective regarding you know, the uh, overall design benefits that we have with the SAP power delivery, the DG Plus power uh, design. At the end of the day, really what we're just trying to do is giving you the best quality card in terms of the lifespan, the performance, and the overall efficiency that it offers, um, with also some additional nice touches in terms of uh, things like fuse protection, which are these little guys that you see right here, which are to help to minimize uh, different types of issues with uh, OCP or OVP type problems that can occur with a graphics card. So from here, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, wrap this card back up and uh, head on over to uh, the actual uh, conclusion. Okay guys, uh, we're pretty much wrap everything up here and, and give you a little bit of perspective regarding our brand new GTX 670 uh, DirectX2 graphics card. Uh, but for you guys that are interested in terms of the mechanical layout sometimes concerns, we're pretty much looking at a pretty uh, reasonable card in terms of the overall length. It's only a two slot card design. So as you can see right here on our Rampage 4 Extreme, we're not really dealing with any overall mechanical conflict concerns, not really any type of, of uh, odd obstructions or anything like that you'd have to worry about. So from there, you're pretty much clear. Now, um, in terms of just wrapping everything up, you know, I think that NVIDIA has brought a really amazing GPU to the market with the GTX 670. For you guys that are looking out for an outstanding level of performance, a whole lot of additional efficiency in terms of uh, watt to performance and the overall uh, thermal acoustics, uh, excuse me, the thermals and the acoustics in terms of the card, uh, this card really, really is an awesome value. Uh, for, so for somebody who necessarily doesn't want to jump all the way in terms of the price point of what a, a 680 might cost, uh, 670 is still going to offer you a really high level of performance in terms of 2560 base gaming, 3D based gaming, even multi-panel based gaming. Uh, and the overclocking performance of this card is outstanding. As I noted earlier, you know, with the GPU boost frequencies, we've been able to exceed 1.3 gigahertz. And in some of those considerations, you can actually be exceeding the performance of even a reference 680 part. Uh, not to discount, of course, that the 680 in itself has an awesome overclocking headroom. So um, you know, for you guys out there that are really interested in the high-end enthusiast segment, you're looking to really maintain the highest level of image quality, you want tessellation, you want soft shadows, you want ambient occlusion, you want to take advantage of the really cool new anti-aliasing op options like a TXXA, 
or FXXA, things like that, you know, this is going to be definitely a card to consider. And, uh, you know, the plus points definitely is also you have that flexibility of looking at two-way or three-way configurations if you even want to push the envelope even further. So as always, I uh, appreciate you guys uh, stopping in, checking out the video. If you have any qu questions or comments, make sure to drop them here on the YouTube page. Um, and as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure and subscribe so we can keep coming back out and, and giving you guys more cool content. And if you want any uh, other information you want to drop our way, head over to Facebook or Twitter.